Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Spider-Man the Animated Series, Season 4, Episode 7, Chapter 4, Partners in Danger. So it's the return of Blade. Blade got introduced in Season 2, the Neo Genet Nightmare, and he finally shows back up in Season 4. A lot has happened since, like, well, Season 2. <laughs> uh, the last we saw, Morbius had turned into a man bat. He got turned back into his regular vampire um, state. Felicia Hardy is not a black cat. I forget how they turned, um, what's, the thing, what's his name, back to a vampire. It might have been Neil Gen Recombinator, which Herbert Landon now has. And so, like, which is now in the possession of the Kingpin. And so, like, Mary Jane has now gone missing. Her and Harry got engaged. The Green Goblin showed up, turned out to be Norman Osborn. Um, he had this device that kind of, like, you can portal anywhere you want to go. And then now it, somehow the device got tapped into, like, the multiverse. Mary Jane fell into like one of the portals. Spider Man looked all in the um, ocean, uh, in the river and stuff, could not find her. Now she has gone missing. Harry's upset about all this. Peter's upset. Peter has now started a relationship with the black cat, but her feelings for Morbius is like too strong to where she distanced herself from Spider Man. The black cat, like I said, Felicia Hardy, the kingpin, turned her by using. Captain Steve Rogers, Captain America's, like, what is it, um, Super Soldier formula, and now she can transform into, like, a Super Soldier. They really went all out <laughs> towards the end of this uh, series. So, anyway, yeah. This has, this episode has to do with Blade looking for his mother. Now, Blade mother has constantly shifted around from different medias, and this cartoon series Blade father was a vampire. He bit um, Blade's mother. Her name got renamed to Miriam in this. She gave birth, gave Blade up, and then she later turned to a vampire herself. Now, one thing to note about the vampires in here. If you're white and you get bit, you get like, grayish white skin. If you're black and get bit, you get like light brown skin. Now, the vampire we see that um, bit Blade's mom in the very first time we saw Blade, he was a white guy. That's why Blade has that like half white looking like skin tone. And so like Blade hasn't seen his mother since. Now in the Blade movie, his mom got renamed to Vanessa Brooks. And she was just a regular human and her and Blade's father was human. And then got bit by Demon Frost while she was pregnant with Blade. And then he thought she died in childbirth, but she did not. And she turned out to be evil and working for um, Deacon Frost. And so then in the comic books, however, her name is Tar. And she like was like, well, I can't say what she was. <laughs> I think I have it set for kids. I don't know if I do or not. Anyway, um, so... She um, got bit by childbirth, died, and then stuff like that. And Blade's father turned out to be some kind of person who worked for some ancient order. But Demon Frost is kind of considered Blade's father because he's the one who bit Tara when she was like pregnant with Blade and stuff like that. So in this version, Miriam, she is like the head queen of like the vampires. She's still wearing old school village clothes from like the 1400s and stuff. And she's voiced by Nichelle Nichols, who was Aurora. I can't say that name. Aurora. Aurora. <laughs> In Star Trek, the original series. God, that's so hard to say. And she does an amazing job in this. JD Hall returns back as Blade. However, we have a new Whistler. Um, the original voice actor, Malcolm McDonald, he left and we have a new guy. I have to get the new guy's name. And so, like, it starts off. Oh, by the way, Blade in comic books, he was born in London, 
So Blade in this cartoon series, he's in um, in Europe, fitting since you know, the comic books. He was born in Europe and stuff. So he's tracking down this vampire, the his mother. But he has. No, I'm, not, I'm bad. I'm, I'm so tired. It's like twelve and I'm yawning. <sighs> That's why I like recording in the mornings. I never like yawn and stuff. <laughs> My bad, everybody. In a way, so he's tracking her down, but he has no idea that's his mom. So he's just looking to like, like stake her and everything. They fight. She's too much for him, but he's getting the upper hand. But then she gets the upper hand, and then she knocks him off the top of the building. When he um, jumps and he grabs her, he they're like flying in the air. Now I want to say that this version of uh, Miriam, she has telekinetic powers. And hypnosis and so her eyes glow green and she can brainwash anybody and move things with her mind lots of vampires have that in certain like novels and stuff so that's okay and so he's holding on her cape she's flying in the air and she detaches her cape and he falls and hangs to the building when he looks through her stuff that she has a, like a newspaper of Michael Morbius and the neogenic recombinator and but they quickly like pass that over so we don't really know what's going on it's just like a quick little thing but then he finds a necklace and he's worried then he screams we don't know why is it but we can't figure what it is you know so anyways we see felicia hardy she now has a cat with the whole black cat thing she's talking about how she misses morbius and how she wants to like save him and everything because Morbius is now turned over a new leaf and he's trying his best not to like drink blood and everything and so you know stuff like that and so Spider-Man he's all upset because he misses the black cat and he's looking for Morbius and he needs help oh god I'm tired <laughs> and so he looks for like black cat but she's avoiding him because she doesn't want nothing to do with him right now because her love is kind of like torn between two men so at some point in time what is it what is it what is it um oh miriam she finds uh morbius and so she attacks him she wants to know about the neogen recombinate he wants tells her but she uses her mind control to like glimpse into his head and now she has all the information she needs and she flees so she is now like what is it somebody gets like their blood drain people think it's morbid so they're looking for him and the cop terry's back terry on leap so she's in like some laboratory and she's looking for some device for the neogenic combinator because she's going to build it from scratch no 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 wait she's going to steal it no no that's right first she attacks landon and she steals it from him and then the kingpin comes in made the dude rest in peace who voiced him um he comes in sees it's gone then she sees it needs some parts and some other stuff. So that's when she goes into the lab and she steals it. She's encountered by Spider-Man, Black Cat, and Terry Lee. They think it's Morbius, but it's her. And so she just whoops on all of them and everything. And then she gets away with what she needs. Um, I think, yeah, then they go to Whistler. Cause he's still living in the like movie theater and they ask him for like help on trying to like find this woman and track her down and destroy her and stuff and so like he helps and everything but uh, this is, no wait this, no 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 I'm, I'm 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 forgetting the part this happened before the lab fight because he's all they thought it was morbius and he's all like what are you gonna do destroy him so they he knows he's like turn over a new leaf and stuff okay so then all that fight happens and this and that then they encounter blade that's right that's right when before miriam escaped they was about to kill her but then blade shows up and he stops them and they don't understand why he's helping this woman he tells them straight up this is his mother from the necklace she's ecstatic she says she's been looking for him all her life and haven't been able to find them and so like blade will not let nobody touch her and blade is whooping on everybody 
And then so later, um, Miriam escapes and Blade like leaves. And then he breaks the tracking unit so Terry can't like trap vampires. My bad about the other part. I totally forgot that they uh, went to Whistler before they went to the lab and the fight and stuff. It happens. I'm getting old. <laughs> and so like Blade tells them that like his mom wants to turn back human. And everything when he later encounters well okay so he encounters terry in like the park and they talk during the daylight because he's a day walker and he said that he's had contact with his mom his mom wants to use the gen a neogenic recombinator to turn herself back into human but you know you can't really believe a vampire can you and so like at some point in time what is it um she's still his mom is still working on the thing and then she turns like two humans into vampires because she's now perfected the, the um device and she used her blood um to turn them into vampires as opposed to peter's blood and so at some point in time she's talking to blade and she tells and he tells her you know this is great you're gonna be human and then she ambushes him with the two people that she turned into vampires and tells him she has no intentions of ever being human again, that she loves being this way and she wants a vampire family and that he's too weak, um, his half human self, so she tries to turn him. But um, he breaks free. So anyway, at some point they all find her again and there's a huge, huge, huge battle. And she's trying to turn everybody in this nightclub into vampires, but you know, the heroes stop her. But, you know, stuff happens, her and Morbius fight, the Neogenic Recombinant goes off and it hits a crystal ball, like a disco ball. And then like everybody is like turning into vampires in that building. So like they have to like stop them. And it's just this huge battle left and right. And Blade now knows his mom has been forever gone, so he now is trying to kill her and everything. And then they all fight. The Neogenic Recombinator hits the ground hard. And then in a burst of light, all the vampires turn back into humans. That she turned with the Neogenic Recombinator. She is furious by this, talking about her family that she yearned for will never be. And she flies off. So Terry and Blade, they say their goodbyes. Cat and Spider-Man, they say their goodbyes because the cat decides she's going to go with Morbius to like help Blade track down like Miriam and other vampires. So he's reluctant at first because he can't stand vampires, but he said, fine, like whatever, you know. Also in this episode, I like to point out that when Morbius was weak after he saved them and stuff the first time, Blade um mentor wrestler gave him some serum and as we know that helps keep like blaze thirst at bay so it's not a cure but it's helping him being like more human and that's what makes him turn over a new leaf also also in this as peter's like about to change into like spider-man one of his masks had ripped from like the blade fight so he changes up and he leaves his mask dangling on uh, out the drawer in comes Harry, because Harry's upset Mary Jane's missing. And then he goes into pe um, Peter's room. He sees the mask dangling and wants to know, whoa, what's why does Peter have Spider-Man's mask? And then he stops and thinks about all the time Peter has disappeared and the whole Mary Jane thing and how some things just aren't adding up. Why? Because at some point in time, Harry is going to become the new Green Goblin because he's able to see his father. His father is trapped in some type of Nexus Void actual plane type thing. And he's able to communicate through Harry. All in all, this is a pretty cool episode. It's nice for Halloween. It's nice to see Blade again. It's nice to see that whole thing with his mother. You know, and it's just like... I have no qualms with this episode. It's just awesome, you know? It's dark, but on a kid's type of level, you can enjoy yourself. They're vampires, and who doesn't love vampires? You know, we get to see Blade back, but he doesn't have none of his iconic, like, growling lines that he had in the other episodes, but that's all right and stuff. And it's a nice continuation from what happened in like season two and some of season three, you know. 
So, yeah. Check it out on Disney um, Plus. That wasn't that spooky. Alright, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>